Hello, it's Trucker Joe, and we are back uh, from a bit of a hiatus. I kind of, yeah, I kind of had to deal with my own stuff for a while. Uh, but I have come back with a tutorial. Like it's occurred to me, it's been quite some time since the last time. So let me remedy this. So, you already know the two uh, designs that I had ultimately came up with during the tutorial. We have this design, which is the regular uh, kind of submarine. I have my uh, forward propulsion and uh, uh, like hydrofoil based craft, which is pretty good. Uh, for uh, moving about in the water but it doesn't have the best altitude control uh, just for a simple reason cosine losses like all of its power that it puts to move forward is also spent uh, trying to keep it uh, a certain level in the water that's a weakness however a design like this could theoretically take a large amount of damage and still work properly because there aren't any like chambers that need there aren't like any pockets of air that it needs to rely on to work that said it's still slightly slower because on average it's going to have to pitch up and down in order to uh, maintain its steps now when did this design which is significantly more efficient because I can uh, if I tell this thing to move forward it would eventually level out just from the fact that its buoy would change uh, uh, location like it would turn on and off and that would keep it uh, at the right height all the time and these thrusters wouldn't suffer as much from the cosine losses issue uh, so, yeah, that said, it's pretty delicate, given that it's a metal tank. There, like, if, if you lose, uh, containment, like, one hole, and the thing's going to just sink. It is one of the smallest designs. I mean, as you can see here, it actually bobs a little bit switching on and off and as it does so we bob slightly I can actually fix this and I will by doing this we don't need you we're going to sink a little bit all we really need is air pump altitude we set that altitude to uh, negative 50 and what's going to happen is that the just it's going to set its buoyancy fraction to uh, adjust the altitude and as you can see here it'll eventually balance out and we'll get a specific uh, altitude uh, this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to a lower number to kind of make it react a little bit more uh, effectively but basically with this it will find a way to set it to its equilibrium and when it reaches equilibrium it'll stay at the exact right altitude so I'm actually kind of curious what this equilibrium is Okay, I found it. It appears to be roughly around 80%. 79, 80, 81, 82, 3. Yeah, it appears to be roughly this amount. With just two uh, blocks, we can keep it leveled. All you need is an air pump. Uh, you will probably have to tune it. Uh, in this case, I tuned it to be extremely reactive and try to correct over a very short amount of time uh, so that it quickly settles in the correct altitude 
anyway, all you need is air pump altitude. You want to set the test stimulus to the altitude you actually want. And then you just set this to run. It does kind of bob slightly, but I think that's mostly like the twisting, isn't it? Yeah. So it's not really moving all that much. It's just kind of being buffeted more or less by the water, but its center of mass is staying exactly where it has, uh, where it should be. Now, so yeah, so that's the little correction I had to make. You can do this with unblock, and this is probably the better method to do it with because it's going to be a little bit more stable. That said, the on and off method works very well as well. It's just more vulnerable because there's an extra block involved. I'm going to convert this thing into a hybrid design. So I still have the uh, hydrofoil altitude con controller. So yeah, I remember this. That way it stays level. And in this case, in combination with the air pump, that's actually going to be extremely efficient because it's using hydrofoils to correct its pitch. So, so yeah, so if I do this, and I probably should be doing this like this, and this, that should be pretty much all we need to do actually so now we just need to give this thing a patrol path so how about Warm up and fly with fleet moving out how about moving a out. triangular moving out. path like this now as you can see here it's going to be adjusting its pitch uh, now I'm obviously going to have to tune this to be stronger because I didn't uh, provide it with actually better yet. I can just do this. And I don't strictly need these in the back, but yeah. So as you remember, I'm sure. Uh, Hydrofoils in the front here, like those are going to control pitch normally, and if you want to do behind the mass, then you reverse the hydrofoils. That way, they technically uh, work the same way, because they'll set to the same angles, but they'll be reversed because you reverse hydrofoil. Hopefully they don't do anything to change this behavior. Now, as you can see here, this design actually moves about quite easily but let's say we had a hole breach so as you can see here this design is now able to compensate uh, and it's going to keep its uh, depth by pitching up and down so say I sustained some damage like this which that's a pretty reasonable place to have sustained some damage just kind of like got some holes it's like this craft is still going to be able to uh, keep going even if it's a little bit heavy-handed so now it's going to uh, pitch back up I'm actually going to yeah that, that's fine so my altitude drops below 50 that's the one it's allowed to engage and as you can see here it is con controlling the altitude fairly well. If I restore this, it should actually start traveling normally. This kind of... Let's see here. So this thing is obviously going to be adjusting itself quite a bit. Now it's adjusting itself properly. Hmm. Come on. There we go. 
Now the system has caught up and it's back to running efficiently. Okay, so I slightly enhanced it using a few thrusters. Now, this is actually kind of cool. I may as well kind of showcase this. Uh, I can actually have my thrusters be asymmetrical a little bit. So like, say I want to add a bunch of thrusters like this, it's actually going to allow me to do that because the hydrofoils will adjust as you can see there like they are compensating for the fact that I've just added these uh, hydrofoils if I were to show you they're at a bit of an angle like especially these you can like clearly see it here uh, with the blade if I look at it dead on the blades turned up uh, so you don't have to worry too much about your thrusters being misaligned or anything either. So yeah. So a design like this, really the only power it's actually using uh, is the power for the uh, engines to move forward. And then everything else is going to be handled uh, by the EID controller. However, should something go wrong and we get shot like obviously it's going to sink and uh, have to compensate so just kind of so it's sinking now it's going to adjust its pitch in order to compensate for the fact that it sank and then when it repairs itself it'll actually uh, properly adjust again. Although it's pretty strong, so it's going to be pretty... Like in that case, you can see... Yeah. So yeah, anyway... So this being my kind of test sub... Uh, it's actually working exactly how I want it to. So we'll just put you... I'm going to save you as test sub 3. Because that's sort of a thing. So basically you just have to kind of imagine what kind of design you're going for. Okay, so one last thing. This is definitely not a submarine, but I think this point can, uh, stands. Uh, if you use the PID uh, tutorial uh, that I have, which it's going to be linked in the description, don't worry. Uh, this craft, uh, I feel like this craft is a really good demonstration for exactly what kind of, uh, like, system you need in place to ensure efficiency. Uh, as you're running, there's always going to be a constant, uh, passive cost using a PID-based system as it needs to maintain its depth under the water. In this case, since it's actually poking up a bit above water, it's actually spending a bit more than a submarine would. But still, for, for efficiency's sake, you are going to want uh, hydrofoils, uh, static hydrofoils, set to uh, an angle like 20 degrees. Uh, what this did for this craft in particular was keep the engine from peaking. Uh, and it also like shaved off quite a bit of the power requirement because when it's moving forward it doesn't have to exert as much force. Uh, meaning that it could keep its railguns up in combat. Obviously a submarine's probably not going to have railguns unless, unless you're a mad scientist like me then maybe you'll make it like that. Now I have an idea. <laughs> I'm super tempted to make a pure railgun now uh, or submarine but yeah this kind of thing uh, it's a pretty good way to ensure that the craft uh, runs smoothly and that it keeps fuel costs down that said I wouldn't actually ever say that using like 
I would never say that using a PID based system for submarine this way is that great though. There are way better ways to handle your submarines, such as the methods I already showed you, and those will just naturally be much more efficient than using the PIDs, uh, especially the composite design, which would, which if you have the time to give proper uh, design considerations, you can certainly make a craft that combines these methods. Okay, so this slab of armor, I just checked to be absolutely sure. This is neutrally buoyant. Uh, so if you want like an armoring scheme that is extremely strong and uh, also neutrally buoyant, this is the kind of armor you want. Uh, that said, it's a little bit thick. For more neutral armor, that's not as thick. I can always just use uh, stone armor because it's insulating. So with all that out of the way, I may as well tell you guys what I'm thinking about for the next tutorial and feel free to change my mind. I am thinking of making an aircraft tutorial, uh, starting with thruster craft and figuring out planes. I'm actually kind of not really built many planes, so this is as much is going to be as much of a learning experience for me as it will be for you, but I am very much aware of the mechanics involved. And so yeah, so when I think I'm ready and I know enough about those systems to be able to make a tutorial, expect one sometime soon. Anyway, I hope this tutorial had been helpful for you. I'll see you later.